Hey friends, it's Alex from Vulture Culture and welcome to Fundamentals of EQ. Today we're going to be talking about phase cancellation in an EQ and why you need to watch out for it. Before we get started, please like this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all of the tutorials I'm doing on EQ. Uh, I'm going to be using ReEQ, which is the stock EQ plugin in Reaper, but you could use whatever EQ plugin you'd like. So let's get started. So phase cancellation in EQ is an interesting thing you have to look out for. So I'm gonna make a double of my vocals to start with. And uh, here's my vocals on their own. There's nothing left here for us. I couldn't take it if you stayed. My world has been painted black and gray. I know I'm nothing to you. Another. Now, uh, what you'll see a lot on the internet that I want to discourage you from doing is stuff where people will say, you know, to get a very polished pop sound, uh, what you want to do is actually uh, scoop out a lot of low frequencies from your vocals, maybe something like this. and then add them back into your vocals before. Uh, so let's do that real quick here. There's nothing left here for us. I couldn't take it if you stayed. My world has been painted black and gray. Sounds pretty good, right? I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's just a, you know, it's quite a dramatic difference. It's gonna add a lot of air and presence to a track. But one of the things that people uh, don't know about EQ is unlike compression, which sounds great in parallel, whenever you have uh, parallel configurations in uh, EQ, this orange line represents the phase. And as I move the phase, it's like the phase cancellation I showed in the last video. Once I've moved it to 180, it is... Uh, going to cancel out completely. So when you're using a high pass filter, you can see that it actually does a full 180 right around the cutoff point. There's nothing left here for us. So even though it is adding frequencies up here, actually around 2K, it's it's absolutely killing every frequency around there. And it's more dramatic if I find a good spot for There's it. There's nothing left here for oh, us. Like around here. I couldn't take it if you stayed. My world has been painted black and gray. I know it's I'm a little hard to hear just because of the volume difference, but if you listen to this there's nothing left here for and pay attention to the fundamental note which is the roundness at the bottom stayed. of the sound my world has been painted and now we play these back together about half volume there's nothing left here for can you hear it us. I couldn't it has just absolutely sucked out that note entirely there's nothing left here for now us. part of that is because this e this uh is is cutting out everything below 100 but specifically at 200 it is canceling a frequency some uh engineers actually use this trick to sort of you can kind of think of it as like this at this frequency here there's an additional narrow uh cut you're not seeing uh and that's because as you uh affect the phase uh just like when i was showing the phase cancellation earlier it is canceling out frequencies. I'm going to go back to the all pass filter to sort of demonstrate this. But see, so you can see the all pass filter now actually uh, has a, a serious phase bump in here. And as I move this around with these together, there's nothing left here for us. I couldn't take it if you stayed. My world has been. That's all the phase cancellation. You could see that a high pass filter has this exact same phase cancellation, and it's a lot more dramatic when you don't hear the other effect of what's going on. Now, the problem with EQ. Uh, probably the, the single biggest problem with EQ is the fact that any movement you make is affecting the phase. And once again, I feel like I have to do a little bit of debunking here. You might hear on the internet um, that phase sounds bad, phase manipulation is bad. It's not bad at all unless you're using a, a parallel configuration like this. And parallel just means that I have two of the same track, but one has processing and one doesn't. So as long as uh, you've only got one 
vocal track or whatever it is you're doing, uh, there's no identical copies. Phase doesn't matter whatsoever. But if you do have uh, these copy, a copy like this, or with drums especially, people do this trick too. There's nothing left here for us. I couldn't tell. You are just absolutely butchering whatever it is that you're working on. So they actually invented a type of EQ to deal with this. So this is Pro-Q 2, which is made by FabFilter. It's an amazing EQ plugin, but it has a linear phase mode here. There's nothing left here for us. I couldn't take it if you stayed. And what linear phase does is instead of um, having a certain frequency part of the uh, spectrum uh, delayed, it, it actually moves the whole track back. And what it does is it makes it so that you don't have to worry about um, phase cancellation, which is wonderful. There's nothing left here for us. I couldn't take it if you stayed. My world has been painted black. So you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, linear phase doesn't sound any better on its own. You hear a lot of mastering engineers say stuff like, well, I only use linear phase when I'm mastering, and like it is some sort of magical kind of EQ. It doesn't sound any better. And in fact, it's uh, it's actually got its own host of problems uh, called pre-ringing, particularly for drums. It sounds terrible. So there, there actually are reasons to not use linear phase as much as possible. Um, but if you ever are in a situation where you want to parallel EQ something, you absolutely want to use linear phase instead of uh, a normal uh, phase plugin. So that's it. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see the rest of my EQ tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.